I just wanted to kind of pause there and just let you guys listen to the very, very faint and ambient version of Hyrule Castle's theme. I really like this theme a lot. It is really, really very quiet and ambient and mysterious, kind of like the situation we're in. And I really, this is one of my favorite renditions of Hyrule Castle in the whole entire series. But as soon as you come inside the main floor of Hyrule Castle, you'll be greeted with another, you know, enemy gauntlet. But this time, they're actually throwing more enemies than just the goblins at you this time. They're actually throwing Lizolfos at you, too. So, <laughs> just go ahead and take care of them as, as, as you see fit. Finishing blow. Hey, how did I not kill you? That went right through your body. <laughs> okay, Lizolfos. Man, I just love this theme of Hyrule Castle's ambient theme here. But as soon as you beat that gauntlet, a treasure chest spawns. We're gonna have to go ahead and get that here in just a second. Um, you're gonna be needing your double claw shots for this segment because the chandeliers in this room are actually claw shot points. Yeah, strange enough, they are indeed claw shot points. Of course, what is a claw? What isn't a claw shot point in this game? This game had a really good fascination with claw shots, or like hook shot points. So yeah, you can actually use the claw shot on the on the chandeliers here, and kind of lower yourself into the, the the overhead. Inside is the compass, a handy tool that well you know what this does. At this point in the game, it shows you where the items are in the map. <laughs> So here's the compass. Uh, we have gotten all the treasure chests on the first floor. In the second floor, we still have a bunch of treasure chests there. And the third floor, there's nothing there, but the fourth floor has a bunch of treasure chests in one room. So just you know, keep that in mind whenever you're going around here trying to get all the treasure chests. But we're gonna go ahead and use the claw shots to kinda lower ourselves a little bit so that way we can go ahead and grab a hold of this chandelier. And then we're just going to go ahead and drop through here. You can claw shot your way up to that chandelier, but there's nothing over there for you right now, so don't worry about it for right now. As soon as we come in through here, we're greeted with a dark nut. Yeah, they're going to start throwing big dark nuts at you at this point now. So, you know how to fight these, just avoid his sword swipes and everything, avoid his, you know, attacks. And then whenever he's open, go ahead and just start thrusting your sword into his armor to kind of knock pieces of his armor off. Like so. And then once he's down to his phase two, there's a sword and brings out a smaller one. He's a lot more quicker. Using the back slice is probably the most ideal thing to do during this phase. Just, you know, do a back slice to kind of un undo his, his parry, and then you can attack him like normal. And that, in turn, causes another treasure chest to spawn. Now, in this room, this room's kind of got a weird puzzle to it. <laughs> you wouldn't it actually took me when I first played this game back in 2016 it took me a while to figure this puzzle out now as you guys can see one torch is already lit and there's also a lamp refill station if you need to refill your lantern so just keep that in mind as soon as you light this torch that segment of the staircase will open will uh, raise up. And if you li like that one, that staircase raises up. But, um, how does the other one raise up? Well, we bring out our Gale Boomerang and actually stand on the staircase here. Use your Gale Boomerang to, uh, unlight the torch. 
over there, that causes this to go up. So just keep that in mind. You gotta stand right on it when it goes up, though. Because there's no way you can get up there. But inside the treasure chest is 50 rupees. <laughs> not too not too shabby. If I can find my bowling chain, where is that? There it is. Okay. But yeah, you can actually knock down the armor pieces with the ball and chain. I don't think it really does anything because I haven't found any any money in them whenever I knock them down. So just keep that in mind. I mean, I don't know if there's money in knocking down all these statues, but I haven't found any. Now you have two paths here. You can go left or you can go right. And honestly, it's probably be best advised to go both paths. We're going to go ahead and do that. Because, you know, treasure and all that other stuff is... Who doesn't like treasure, right? As soon as you walk into this side, on the right side, you'll notice that it's kind of dark here. And the door is locked. There's a torch right here. We're going to have to use our lantern to light, the lan to light these torches here. But... As you guys can see, the torches go out really fast. So there's more to it than just lighting the pet these things. We have to light these in a pattern. Because they're not, you know, going the right way. What we can do, if you kind of see, there's a picture that's hanging up there by rope. And if you remember a long time ago in Goron Mines, we can actually break rope. With the, oh, the bow and arrow. And it kind of tells us what to do with the lantern. So we have to kind of go on this path. So start this one. Come over to this one. Like that one. Then like that one. Then finally like this one. That opens up that door. Like I said, I don't think that there's money on these statues. Because every time I knock them down, there isn't any anything. I think it's just there for scenery. Because, well, it's, you know, a big old royal family castle. Why wouldn't they have armors and stuff like that? But I always just found it weird that they didn't drop money there. Because all the other instances where we break down stat like statues like this, we always got money. In the next room, we got this room guarded by two Dynafuls. Probably the most... I, I'd say that these guys are probably the most annoying enemy in the game. Because it's hard to hit them. The only way to hit them is whenever they're about ready to strike you, use your shield attack. And then use a Helm Splitter. So only just wait until they're about ready to attack you, then, you know, just use your... Helm, your helm splitter ability with a shield tag. You can use back slices, but they move around too quick for my liking to do a back slice. They kind of just, you know, follow you around. And they're fully armored, too. That's another thing that's really annoying. They're easier to fight, I feel like, in wolf form, as we found out from the trial of the Cave of Shadows. Um, because. Once they're about ready to attack you, you just push the A button and do a lunge attack, and then you just start biting their neck and do rinse repeat until they're dead. Helm Splitter. Okay, so now that we've expo fully explored this side of the castle, this will lead us outside. Outside on the balcony. We don't want to go out there just yet. We want to kind of go in through this door and this will lead us back to the central room As soon as you do so you'll notice that there's a switch here. Let's go ahead and hit that And that causes this chandelier to come down a lot easier and this will allow you to backtrack a lot easier so if you ever need to come back to this room for whatever reason, you can. You can, you can actually go back up there, go the, go the other way, and kind of loop around a little bit. But I'm actually going to go ahead and just loop around this way because I find it a little bit easier to loop around because there's no enemies to deal with. We've already cleared it out, so don't worry about it right now. 
Like I said before, we're gonna go back on the balcony later. I just want to explore the other end first. Because there is a reward for clearing out both ends. So now we're gonna go down this way. Inside this room, you got two li uh, Lizolfos with skull heads. Nothing too bad. So let's go ahead and take care of these guys. I always found it funny whenever they, whenever they die, they make that sound effect. Now, in this room, we're going to have to, just like in the the lantern room, the, the dark lantern room, we're going to have to knock, start knocking down some pictures. And they actually have switches behind them. Now, if you hit the wrong switch, it'll barrage you with uh, yellow chews. So just be careful. I can't remember which one's the right one, so we're just going to have to go ahead and wing it a little bit and just... You know, fight a, fight all these shoes, I guess. I'll knock down this one. And activate that one. That's the door. There you go. Alright. So now let's go ahead and go through here. Now inside here, we got two dark nuts. Just like floor 48 of Cave of Ordeals, we gotta deal with two Dark Knights. <sighs> so they were kind of, Cave of Ordeals was kind of preparing us for this. So. That's the most, uh, I mentioned this before, it's probably the most annoying thing to deal with the Dark Knights in this game compared to like Wind Waker. Because, at least in Wind Waker, if there was multiple Dark Knights, <laughs> those Dark Knights could actually hit their, hit, hit their friends. In this game, they don't have friendly fire on for the for their company, so you won't be able to hit. They won't actually hit themselves by accident, but that's okay. You just know how to deal with dark nuts. It's not really that hard. I say that as I get hit. Let's go ahead and just take care of one dark nut, and that's that's one dark nut down. Let's go ahead. And Strip of the other one. That that one in particular dropped three hearts too, so that was nice of him. With that, he's on phase two, and we're gonna have to go ahead and use the back slice. Oh come on, camera! You didn't work with me on that, or my my uh, control stick didn't go the way I wanted it to. That's okay. He did it again. He did a jump strike when I didn't want him to. I wanted him to kind of like do, start the uh, back slice again. Every now and then, when the camera is not pointed the right way, my inputs are kind of not the way I wanted it to. But there we go. We destroyed both dark nets. Now he dropped a quiver. That's that's kind of odd because. Um, I could have swore he was going to drop an orange rupee. Because um, when I practiced this and I fought that dark nut, well, one of them dropped three hearts and one of them dropped an orange rupee. I don't know why he didn't drop an orange rupee just now. That's okay. I don't care. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and hit this switch here in the center room. That causes that treasure chest to spawn. And like I said before, you can we're gonna have to probably work our way down and around. But before you do before you jump off this balcony here, grab this treasure chest. <laughs> it's easy to miss it if you don't turn the right way. That switch might make you not look at it. But there's fifty rupees here. Uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna jump down. And we're gonna go ahead and try and get that other treasure chest we just got. Kind of just, you know, claw shot, do Spider-Man. I always love the double claw shot so much because it makes Link uh, look like he's Spider-Man a little bit. 
Okay, as soon as we do that, we drop right here. Jump, uh, get up on top of the railing here, and then you should be able to reach this chandelier here. And as soon as we do that, we can drop down, get this treasure chest. Inside is a silver rupee. So, more money. We're actually going to go ahead and use the um, shortcut chandelier that we dropped down earlier. So we're going to go ahead and grab that, lower it up down just a little bit, and then go ahead and grab the other one. This allows us to go back into the previous room where we fought uh, the two Donovals. And now we're going to go out onto the balcony. Now, just like everything else in this dungeon, this has two paths. Make sure you go down both paths. The first one's right straight in front of you from that door. But there is an aerial force here you have to take care of first. Alright, so I'm going to pull out my claw shots. I'm going to use my my webbing on you cuz I'm spider link. Let's just take care of Mr. There's a couple more hits on him like that. I think I can use the back I tried to actually ever use the back slice on this guy. No, I just he rolled right into his freaking sword swipes. Get over here! There we go. Took care of that aerial fools. And as soon as we do that, it's unlocked here. So we can go ahead and grab our prize here. Inside is another small key. We're going to have to use this small key in order to unlock the door up to the, the second, to the, what floor is this? To the third floor of the, dun of the uh, castle. The front, the door on the balcony here is locked, so be sure to grab this key before you can go anywhere. Anywhere. I know you have an extra key, but you want to save that extra key. Let me come up here to the third floor, and as you guys can see, the door is locked. But before we do that, we're going to go on the other side because the other side has a very important item in it. As soon as we go across the bridge, it opens up. But there's a bunch of Lizolfos here. And Bulblins. Wow. Who's destroying all these enemies? Why, it's no, none other than Telma's companions. I'm in here to help us fight all the enemies here in the castle. I always like that scene. I always like that the that Telma's companions are helping you here. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and grab our prize here. This is none other than the big key. What well, we need to gain access to the boss door. So now we can make sure you get that. They play a little cutscene right in front of the important item that we need. <laughs> I think that's it. Alright. So now that we've cleared out both ends of this balcony, we can actually go up to the third floor now. And without further ado, let's go inside. As you guys see, as we're slowly ascending Kyro's castle, um, 
The music's getting rather more ominous. Rather more, you know, upbeat and ominous now. <laughs> now, for this segment here, um, it's best for a wolf, because as soon as you jump across here, you'll notice, well, obviously there's ghoul rats here. Let's go ahead and take care of them. But if you jump on any of these things, the floor will crumble and you'll fall down. I'm just doing this as an example. I know where to go. <laughs> and you'll void out and obviously spawn back at the door. But if we open up, we gotta deal with the again. That's just great. Um, anyways, you'll notice that there's more Hyrule Soldier Spirits here. And they're actually showing you the way you need to go. So you just have to follow the path of the Hyrule Soldier's point, where they're pointing. So you, he needs to go this way and jump across here. He points that way and you jump across here. Got skulls here. <laughs> you jump across here. And then finally jump across here. And with that, you should be good. <laughs> now we're going to be climbing the broken staircase. Now, this is fine for right now until we get up here. We got another gauntlet with more Lizalfos. Go ahead and just take care of these Lizalfos. They're pretty easy enemies. Just stab him, finish him, blow him on him. As soon as we do that, now the bridge is a little bit more broken and we can't cross it easily. Now we need to... Or staircase. I say staircase. It's, it, it's a staircase, not a bridge. We're going to use our claw shots to grab these lanterns right here. These, like... I don't know what these are called. Like, candle sticks here or whatever it is. You're just going to go ahead and use your double claw shots to kind of maneuver your way across the staircase here like this. And then once you get up to this room, you'll notice there's more Lizalfos we have to take care of. Go ahead and Helm Splitter both of them. Take care of them both. Now here, there's another staircase that's broken. And this is the last time we're going to have to use our spinner here. <laughs> We're going to use the spinner to jump across the railings here in order to get access to the next floor of the castle here. I just love how the organ is offended. The organ and the instrumental here is gradually growing as we climb up the castle. And as soon as you come up here, there's a dark nut guarding the boss door. Our final challenge before the boss, a Dark Knight, a worthy adversary. I don't think this is any old regular Dark Knight. This is a mighty Dark Knight. I think that's actually what the term this is called. I think this is a mighty Dark Knight. Just like any old, old other Dark Knight. We just have to fight him like we, we have been. Just dodge his attacks and when he's open, you know, chip away at his armor until you go to phase two where he's armorless. Use back slice to do more major damage to him and then just rinse and repeat until he's dead. And with that, we have, we have slain the Dark Knight and he gives us three hearts. But before we go to the door, before we go through the boss door, there is one more door we have to go through. And this is the door that you need your extra small key for. This is why I told you guys it's very important to get both keys on both uh, ends of the courtyard of Hyrule Castle before you get, go inside. Because the extra key is used for this room. And this room's kind of special because, well, the door right next to it is the final boss door. So, this room is nothing more than a restock room. This room has a bunch of bombs, arrows, and all that other jazz, and it has a refill station for your lantern. It has everything in here. It has a bunch of treasure chests in it, too. Most of it's just rupees, 
But, you know, it doesn't hurt to have it money at this point, because, well, if you've done everything at this point, you, you're going to be taking all this money. You won't be eating it, like, um, in the Wii version where your max was 2,000 rupees. So let's go ahead and get all our treasure chests here. Yeah, see, there's bombs here, too, to restock on your bombs if you're low on bombs for whatever reason. Your quiver gets restocked. It's just everything here is just a restock room. And it's really appreciated. And you even get pumpkin seeds for your slingshot. <laughs> even though you don't use your slingshot. Gets yeah, arrows and bombs and everything else. And then, not only that, there's a fairy in here too if you need a fairy, which I don't need a fairy because, well, I'm already full. So there's a fairy here too. Now, inside the actual, like, big chest here, I think there's not a lantern. I, I could have swore there was a lantern thing in here. I might have been wrong. There's not a lantern restock thing in here. I'm sorry. I completely forgot. <laughs> don't mind me for saying that. Inside the big chest, I think there's more rupees, so do that. But one of these chests has something important in it. You got bomblings, which I never really use these things. <laughs> Open this one up. A silver rupee. And open this one up. It has our final Miiverse stamp. The Happy Zelda stamp. And if you look at this, you'll notice that we also got another stamp. The Twilight Minda, Minda stamp. You've collected 49 stamps. Well done. Here's a special stamp as a reward. So when you've collected all 49 Miiverse stamps, you automatically get your 50th. The Twilight Minda stamp, stamp. So with that, we have collected every collectible in this game at this point. We have 100% at this game, besides beating the final boss, obviously. And with that, we've got another 100 rupees. So, yeah, we have completely 100%ed everything. If we look at our collection screen here, we have gotten the Colossal Wallet, which is the best wallet in the game. It gives us 9,999 rupees. Uh, we got the Giant Quiver, got all 100 arrows uh, for a quiver. We got all 60 Poe Souls. Which was a challenge of in itself. <laughs> uh, we got all the golden bugs for Agatha. I filled out my fish journal, which I never thought I was going to, so I'm happy about that. We got all the hidden skills from the uh, uh, golden wolf. And we finally got all 50 stamps. For Miiverse, which, you know, Miiverse is dead, so it's pointless, but we have gotten all 50 stamps for Miiverse. And as well as we got all the heart pieces, too. So we have all all 20 hearts. We also even got the magic armor, too. So we got everything. We have 100% of this game. But with that, all that's left is to go through here, but I'm going to save that for the next episode. So, the next episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, it'll be the finale. We'll be taking on Ganondorf and saving Hyrule. So, with that, I'll see you guys in the next episode.